Help. Hi there. How are you? So, this is the end of week four. It's Monday morning, and I just completed my weigh-in. Uh, it has been four weeks, one month, uh, since I decided to change my lifestyle, change my eating habits, and follow a keto diet. Uh, starting weight four weeks ago was 269 pounds. This morning I am down to 255.8. Uh, that is a loss of exactly three pounds uh, from this weigh-in last Monday. So I'm happy. I'm very happy with that. I still have a goal of 215 pounds. Uh, observations from this week, you know, I, I had almost a mini plateau the week before. You know, I had uh, I had only lost like 1.2 pounds or something, something to that effect. You know, it was, it was pretty minimal, but it wasn't a plateau in week three, and I was especially proud of that. Didn't know what to expect um, going into week four, so I did make some changes. Uh, most notably, I had finally gotten my act together with the stationary bike uh, that I've been talking about for a couple of weeks now. And I may have gone a little nuts on it, which may account for why I did as well as I did this week with the three pound loss. Um, when I first started doing the stationary bike two and a half weeks ago, it was just like a free wheel. No resistance, no nothing. Just, just let my body get used to that motion for 30 minutes. Come by Monday last week, I went ahead and started doing one of their incline programs, and and that was kind of you know a little a little tougher, obviously, uh, and I had to work into that. Um, by midweek, I had done that Tuesday, Wednesday, and not mo by midweek I had done that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I had done all three days uh, at that uh, level, and then I finally decided to bring in, um, hand weights, free weights. Um, my coach, my son, Sebastian has been telling me for ever that, you know, the, the weight lifting aspect of it is going to be crucial too. So I decided, and I kind of set things up so that while I'm on the stationary bike and I'm doing my thing and I'm working up a sweat, um, that I've got these six pound each hand weights and just some very basic rudimentary motions based on what a whole bunch of different people told me. So really I was doing um, sets of 10, uh, like, you know, the, the butterfly curls like this, trying to keep everything tight uh, and doing it like this. Uh, 10 of those followed by, uh, I was initially doing a thing where I was like trying to reach up behind my head and do this, uh, but this elbow was really not happy with that action whatsoever. So uh, that set of 10 quickly changed on some advice I got. Uh, into I think what somebody called like an Arnold press or something where I'm doing this and bringing them back down for sets of 10 on that. So 10, 10, stop. Uh, and then two more times, 10, 10, stop, 10, 10, stop. So I'd have, you know, three sets of 10 reps each in the course of that 30 minutes. There was one day, Thursday, when I was embroiled in a conversation with some folks I work with online I wasn't paying attention to the 30 minutes at all uh, on the bike and I really probably wasn't putting my full effort into that 30 minutes and, I, and at the end of it I just kind of felt like, man, that didn't feel like anything. Uh, so screw it, let's go around a horn again and I reset the 30 minutes and I did a whole other set of the incline with the weights and that totally uh, kicked my butt. <sighs> Crazy. Um, so that was, that was again, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, every single day during the week. I was on that bike um, in the morning after the kids are on the bus. I'm kind of proud of that. Um, so uh, su Saturday and Sunday, I took those days off, rest time, family time, not worrying about it. Uh, with the plan of getting back on it this morning, Monday morning, that wasn't meant to be. It wasn't going to happen. Uh, as soon as the morning came, I had two sons with appointments in the morning. I had to take one out. Uh, my adult son, Spencer, for jury duty, I had to drop him off, and then Sebastian had a doctor's appointment at 8.30, so I was out the door before I could even think about breakfast or, or anything else. So it's now actually almost 11 a.m. Uh, before I'm finally uh, weighing in, uh, which also means I'm finally getting my breakfast, so I figured I'd kind of uh, share with you my breakfast a little bit uh, specifically while I'm 
um, filming and while I'm eating. So this is the standard breakfast that I have been eating pretty much every day for a month now. Uh, I've gone a little changes here and there. Some days I'm going to only be one hard boiled egg. For a little while in the beginning, and we were talking like three or four, and at one point even six sausages, and I don't know what the hell I was thinking with that, and finally bringing it back down and realizing, okay, you got, I gotta have some kind of balance. Um, and even now, looking at this, moving into week five, I realize that this has gotta change again, and I have to do some more some more research and learning. Um, the, uh, the one mainstay for me too, this is not orange juice. This is essentially fake crystal light uh, drink mix orange morning delight flavor, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, but it tastes a lot like orange juice and I drank a lot of Tang when I was growing up. So it, to me it's a familiar taste and I think psychologically it just makes this feel like a solid breakfast to have this you know orange drink. I really enjoy it and that, that helps me get through psychologically what I'm doing. Um, as far as nutrition, definitely settled into a basic salad every single day. Uh, really the core ingredients of the salad have been the romaine lettuce, um, except this week I added in a cup of shredded up, cut up, uh, baby spinach. Ugh, that was, that was a rough transition getting that incorporated in. So, you know, it was really like three or four large romaine leaves, uh, ripped up along with a cup of, um, the baby spinach. Uh, a half cup of uh, raw cauliflower broken up in almost rice uh, spread out. That's been a standard mainstay ever since the beginning. Um, walnuts, about a quarter cup of crushed walnuts. You know, this week I had some leftover um, ground beef from, from a taco dinner. So it was like you know taco salad meat on top, but only a quarter cup of it. Um, chicken at some point, you know, stuff like that. But the real issue has now become protein because that salad also has the majority of the fat intake that I need for the keto. And that's a quarter cup of olive oil. I mean, it really was gross at first and it really took some getting used to, but now I don't even notice it. And, and it definitely helps me get on the 80% fat intake um, for the keto. So, uh, you know, the salad itself comes in anywhere from 800 to 1,000 calories on its own. I'm trying to maintain a calorie intake of about 2,200 uh, calories per day, and that makes it really tough for two reasons. One, this breakfast right here typically comes in at about 400 to 4, I think it's 450 calories. Okay, 450 calories for that, uh, 1,000 calories potentially for lunch. And I got some issues, right? I've only got anywhere, some, some days it's 700, 800 calories left for dinner. Sounds okay, but I've also got a problem in that I'm like a, a carnivore, right? I gotta, <laughs> gotta have a lot of meat. And the problem becomes protein. Sounds like that shouldn't be a problem, but when I look at my, my fitness pal, I'll say it every single time, guys, my fitness pal tracking what I eat, watching the nutrition, um, it, it, there's too much protein. Every single day I'm coming in instead of 80, 15, I'm coming in at 77, 18 yesterday, 79, 16 the day before, 72, 23, 23% protein when I'm only supposed to have 15. And I know that when, when the early stages of this keto were driving this fat intake, to help retrain the body away from carbohydrates, and instead of burning those, burn the fat. So I, somewhere in the midst of all of this, have to figure out how to bring my protein level down, which sounds crazy to me. But I don't know if it's changing something in the breakfast here. I have to do some research uh, this week to figure out what other items I can stomach and deal with uh, putting into this breakfast and maybe taking out one of the eggs or taking out one of the sausages. Um, I'm inclined to think it's one of the eggs to reduce the protein in the in the breakfast um, and also balance the protein intake in the salad so that when I do have a protein heavy dinner it doesn't uh, it doesn't hurt as much uh, apart from that we also made some new uh, fat bombs uh, I made them myself this time uh, we ran through the first batch that Sebastian made me and I wanted to kind of take a crack at it and see if I can make these things so a uh, basic recipe was Two packages of cream cheese, a stick and a half of butter, 
uh, and I think it was like a, a, a quarter cup or not. It might even, no, it was more than that. It was like a cup and a half of coconut oil. Put in your stevia, fake sugar, put in some vanilla to put some flavor in there, whip all that crap up. And I made a, a good number. Like I made these tiny little muffin tin size bombs out of it. Put Made some coconut oil with cocoa powder to make a chocolate uh, covering for them so that you know tiny but they pack just shy of 200 calories uh, and in fact I think um, if I look at it uh, we, we get to you get to if you make a food on uh, my fitness pal you get to name it you get to pick a name of any of your own food right so I came to understand these to be dad's bomb bombs yeah I know corny right but um, one of these things is 171 calories, only 1.2 grams of carbs, 17 and a half grams of fat, and only one gram of protein. So usually that's going to be my dessert is going to be a, a fat bomb just to kind of help me level out, finish out my 2200 calories for the day, uh, and get that fat content as close to 80 as possible towards the end of the day. Additionally, Sebastian made me some little tiny chocolate treats we got a little tiny uh candy mold uh from walmart and i don't really know actually he didn't tell me the recipe i don't know what's in those things but damn they're good they taste like fudge they they have a fudge consistency all of this has to be maintained frozen it's got to stay in the freezer or stay as cold as possible because it will pr literally melt and greasy up your hands but damn this stuff's delicious so that's a lot that's where i'm at um you know i am i'm happy I'm, I'm pleased. I feel different. People are starting to tell me that I look different. I can see it right now looking at the monitor from this camera uh, that I know my neck has gotten smaller. I know that my gut has gotten smaller. I feel it. I, I, I look different than I did four weeks ago. And that is, for me, my self-image, my personal appearance, um, that's the driving factor for me. I know what I want to look like. And this still isn't it, but this is a hell of a lot better uh, than it was for the last uh, five, ten uh, years of my life. So we're going to continue on. Uh, we're going to keep seeing what happens, what changes, and I will come back and talk about it again uh, next Monday, the next weigh-in. If you have any advice for me, please uh, leave it in the comments. And um, thank you for your support, and come along with me on this keto journey. Talk to you next week. Thank you.